Okay, so Jessica writes in to the show and she says, I have heard Joel discuss industrial chicken slaughters that occurred as a result of disease in birds. But, and she attached an article to this where they talk about birds being killed now because of a business failure. So she said, this is new to her. Why don't they process the birds? Why does the industrial response have to be a swift annihilation of food that can go a long way in feeding families? It, it, it was hundreds of thousands of chickens. That's a lot of food. I feel sadness that our society has become so disconnected from creation that killing mass amounts of birds simply because we are no longer have a use for them is justifiable. Thanks for all you do, Jessica Rebus. Okay, so thanks, Jessica, for the question. We really appreciate it. And along with the question, she forwarded me, she forwarded us the um, the the news article about the uh, de depopulation. And so here's the deal. Uh, this is called Cook's Ventures. It's a great, great big uh, factory farm chicken operation in Arkansas. And it went belly up, went bankrupt or, or, or whatever. They discontinued operations. So um, – why why don't they you know why don't they process these chickens why did they um euthanize them so these were um not meat chickens Th there's a couple things going on here one is that in the i want you to think about the uh, like a pipeline okay um so you know imagine kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, you've got this you got this pipeline going on, okay? And and here what you have are you, you have chicks hatched, you have them uh, going you have them being raised going out to a farm. Then they're being used for something uh and and then they're going into, you know, into processing. Well, in a company like this, Everything is tied together. It's all tied together. So when you have a hiccup in one spot, it creates a hiccup in another spot. And so when the when the company stopped operations, when they went out of business, it wasn't like the processing end of the company could continue to functioning like normal uh, while the production farms, so that they have this pipeline going in, but if the if the end of the pipe stops up, i.e., you know they can't pay their workers, they've got to shut down the processing thing because they've gone bankrupt and they can't you know they can't pay their workers. We got to uh, let everybody go. You've got all this all this uh, production end of the pipeline from the hatchery all the way up to the you know to the processing. You've got that pipeline already full. But suddenly, you can't get those chickens processed. Now, nobody else will process those chickens. You can't take them. This was Cook's Ventures. You know, you, you can't take them over to Tyson. You can't take them. You can't call up Purdue and say, "Hey, Purdue, you know, we've got an extra, uh, you know, fifty million chickens here. Can you process it?" Because, because their pipeline is full too, so they can't take them anywhere else. And certainly, Purdue doesn't want Cook's Ventures chickens. That would be a branding problem. They're not going to take somebody else's chickens and uh and so everything gets gets clogged up and i think i think what what this illustrates is that that the system is is tweaked is tweaked to such a a measure of of what efficiency that there's simply no resilience to handle uh, to handle an event that that bobbles <laughs> that that just bobbles this efficiency chain and and so um, it's interesting in the article you know it says uh, that they they foamed the chickens um, you know that's such a euphemistic thing you know foaming sounds fun foaming you know we put it on for aftershave you you know you there's all sorts of reasons for foaming you you know kids play in foam at you know at, at uh, kid parks right foam is fun but in this case um the foam so so imagine you know there's 15,000 chickens in a house and how do you kill 15,000 chickens rapidly well uh the one of the easiest ways 
is simply to pump soap suds in there and the soap suds build up pretty quickly and suffocate the chickens. And so that's how you kill uh, very rapidly. You kill a house full of chickens is with uh, foam, uh, basically soap suds. Uh, you you simply suffocate them all. And that that's, that's quick, easy, you know, done and from an industry standpoint. Now, I can't agree more. What a what a waste! Uh, but but I think that it indicate it 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 simply illustrates the the inherent fragility and inability to flex within these highly compressed, um, supposedly highly efficient. You know, <laughs> when you when you have a zero waste production system, that also means zero flexibility there's there's no place for anything to happen and and you can't you can't wait another week you can't you can't make an adjustment and so what this is is that that the cost so here we have a company that's failing they decide to go bankrupt the cost of finishing out those chickens is way more in in, in a um the cost of paying the processing and trying to finish them out is way more than simply the cost of destroying them. That's the bottom line. And so, so um, obviously nobody's thinking about the life of the chicken. How can we get out of this as cheaply and as quickly and efficiently as possible? And uh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's a, it's a, it's a tragic waste, but I hope everybody realizes that this is, this is created Look, if you've got if you've got hundreds and thousands of small producers and something and somebody has a problem, somebody else can come over and dress those chickens. Somebody else can come over and handle that. Uh, there's I can tell you that in the in the pastured poultry movement, uh, we have a lot of camaraderie. People help each other. People move stuff around. Uh, I've got a problem and, and there's a lot of uh, camaraderie and movement and, and the numbers, the numbers aren't so big that they overwhelm, you know, overwhelm the system here. The numbers are so big and the, the, the processing facilities so big and the money so large and the banks, uh, so much money. You see what I'm saying? It, it, the magnitude of everything, the magnitude of everything reduces the flexibility of everything because everything is so big. So that that's where we are, but it, it's a, uh, yeah, it, it, it is a tragedy. Couldn't agree. Thank you for the question. Thank you for joining us on beyond labels. Our mission with this podcast is to make it accessible to everyone, but we are behind a paywall because the issues we discuss are often subject to censorship. We run into that. And so we have an extremely modest paywall to let us have the freedom to discuss the kind of issues we want to discuss in the way we want to discuss. And you can become a member and enjoy all this content by clicking on the description box below. We look forward to having you join our family.